Well, good day to you. It is the 1st of December, the last month of the year. I hope wherever you are, you are having a wonderful day. My name is Gary Willing. I want to welcome you to Search for Signs, of course, if you're new, and welcome you back if you have been here before. But whether you've been here before and you know all about this information or you're hearing about Maitreya for the first time, I do encourage you to educate yourself better about this. And you can do it however you want to do it. I'll try to make it a little easier for you. I put links in the description portion of every one of these videos that take you to websites that give you really good background information about what we talk about, except for one, because I was just point, it was just pointed out to me by um, Ashwak Radati that the link that I had about Alan Watts discussing the Bible had been taken down by the user. So I really do apologize about that. I had no idea that that was the case. I'll try to find another video that uh, had it in the way that it that that video did because it was wonderful the way that they had the whole thing out there and it wasn't edited and clipped. It was just his speech about the Bible and his interpretation of the Bible. And I just wanted to throw it out there that it was an alternate view of perhaps looking and reading and thinking about the Bible and the truths in the Bible and those kind of things. I thought it was a wonderful discussion about that. So I'll have to find it and see what um, what I can find. If not, in the meantime, if I can't find it, maybe you can. But anyway, thank you very much, Ashur Akhradati, for letting me know about that. I really do appreciate it. So if you want to join the discussion like she did, Post your comment in the comment section. You can also post your question in the comment section, or you can email me directly at searchforsigns at mail.com. But again, thank you, uh, Ashwa Gradati, for your comments. Vanessa Rivera, uh, Dick Larson, R uh, Ricardo Pelswesley, Tesla and Humanity, Zach Laney, Jethro Joshua, and I totally disagree with what you had to say. You said, I need a glass of red wine. I totally disagree with that. I need at least three. Ah, I'm kidding, but thank you for your comment as well. Maitreya and Chad D. Lanier, you guys all took time out of your day to, to join the discussion, and if it wasn't for you guys, I'd really have nothing to say in this video, so thank you so much for that. Now, I want to kind of complete uh, a three-part discussion that I had with somebody named Chad D. Lanier about politics. And I love talking about politics. I love in my own life, I love talking about politics in relation to this information and those kind of things. And it started when I mentioned something about Trump breaking the law. And then he turned around and asked me specifics about the laws that, that Trump broke. And then I tried to, I think I did a pretty good job. And then he commented again, and then I commented again. And then this is the, this is hopefully going to be the last of that. So I won't waste everybody's time, but I wanted to kind of talk about this because this might shed some more light on what I think is really going on politically. But he said, uh, I appreciate you too, but excuses are made on both sides, especially with war and the funding of it. Couldn't agree more. To pretend the left isn't as divisive as Trump and the Republicans is also, I think, an exaggerated omission. So well, you might be right. Um, but are you kidding me? Democrats accuse Tulsi Gabbard of being a Russian asset for opposing corrupt wars. So... Um, yes, I, you know, I thought I did a pretty good job of explaining my point of view that the Democrats are just as guilty as the Republicans for being divisive. The left wing media is just as guilty as the right wing of being opinionated and, and creating narratives to make the other side look bad. I, I'll be the first to admit that, right? You know, and, but where I think the Republicans and and the people who support Republicans and, and Trump are really taking it to a whole other level is they're using Christianity and patriotism to, to not only gin up their base, but to create a long-term loyalty of, of, a, of a voting base for them so that these people who are good Americans and good, good people probably, right, for the most part, right, are being fed these lies that if you if you vote for Democrats, you're voting for Satan and evil, and you're voting against Jesus. And they're, that's the reason why they don't even want to listen to what they have to say. So that's where I think, and, and if they win out, and this does do with their long-term plan, it will create a long-term problem in this country until, they, until that issue is resolved. And we got stuff we got to work on. Both sides have to look at each other as people and just people and not demons versus good. And, you know, they're the light and they're the, I mean, 
I've never said that about the Republicans, you know, that they are evil, that the Democrats are. I've never said that. They're both corrupt, right? But when you really look at it and get down to the brass tacks of it, the evil of what they're doing, it's genius for one thing because it's working, but it's also creating huge divisive issues in this country and problems in this country. And we got bigger problems we have to face together. You know what I mean? So I'm only concerned about the future, like I said, and I know that the only way we can get there is together. That's what they said. I'm quoting a line in, in the movie The Matrix, but it's true. There's a truth to that, you know? That's what I was talking about with this. Okay, so, you know, the left has their narrative. I'll give them that much. And the left can't stand Trump. I'll give them that much. Right? But, and, and Trump has done some good. I'm not going to lie. And he's tried to push forth a few legislative ideas that I could agree with. But I'm objective in those regards. Is the other side as objective? No. Other people on the left that aren't as obje- or aren't objective and can't see some of the good things that they're putting out there, yeah, I, I would agree with that, right? But you know, I mean, for instance, like for one thing, I agree that that the smoking age should have been raised to twenty one. That was all done under Trump. You know, I agree with that. I had no problem with that. Never once said that Trump was a bad person for that. You know, and you know, I also did a little research on on the EBT and SNAP and food stamps. Uh, law that that Trump was trying to to push forth. I I don't know if he won or not, but he was trying to push forth legislation that what would that the things that qualify now would not qualify for food stamps. Um that it would have to be considered nutritional food. And I couldn't agree more with that. I mean I I, I know people use food stamps because they they can't afford food. I and I'm I'm in complete support of that. But what I'm not in support of is being able to use that to buy junk food. Why not make it to where you have to get nutritional food for you and your family versus gum or cheese puffs or candy, you know what I'm saying? Candy bars or soda or things like that, you know, and that's what he was trying to eliminate. And then the narrative on the left was he was trying to, um, you know, hurt the poor and, and because he was trying to take away, uh, SNAP benefits. And that's not what the case, that, that wasn't the case. So that was a political narrative that the left was doing to try to make him look bad. Well, they knew all along that, you know, what, it, what he was trying to do and, but they both do it, you know, but to say that Biden, and this is, I'm going to swing back to this and bring this, even though you admitted that, you know, I got you on specifics, you know, Biden, Obama, and Hillary Clinton all did everything that he did times 10. I, I, You'd have to come with me with more than just your word on that. You'd have to come with me with some evidence, right? Did they do stuff that was illegal? Probably. Did every president do something that was illegal? Probably. I mean, Abraham Lincoln, the most beloved president in in American history, right before the Maryland state legislator was going to legislature legislators were going to vote whether to stay in the union or secede along with the South. It was looking like they were going to secede. So what did he do? He had the people who were Confederate sympathizers put under house arrest until the vote. And then he let them out. Would I have agreed with that at the time? Probably not. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? But, you know, looking back on it, I guess, you know, the ends justify the means to some degree, but was that totally legal? Probably not. (laughs) You know what I mean? So, I mean, they, they all do it and I'm not condoning it and I'm not justifying it, but you know, what I was trying to say is, you know, when it, when we talk about the sort of cleavage, we're seeing it in real life at this time, politically, economically, racially, uh, between genders even. I mean, it's everywhere. You see these divisions in thinking where, where more and more groups cannot see the other side's point of view at all and cannot work with or cooperate with them at all. This is a temporary situation. Now, what the sort of cleavage is, if you don't know it in the Bible... Jesus said, I come not to bring peace, but to bring a sword, to set father against son, mother against daughter, brother against brother, neighbor against neighbor, or something to that effect. And Ben's master shines some light on what he was talking about. And it's, you know, fascinating to see it from a master's perspective about what was Jesus saying in that regard. Because when I talk about Maitreya bringing, you know, trying to inspire humanity to bring about peace. The only way to bring about peace is through the principle of sharing. People like to throw that back in my face like, ah, see, your guy's evil because Jesus said he comes not to bring peace. Well, they don't understand what he was saying as far as I'm concerned. You know, they might think that they do, but I don't think they they really understand what Jesus was talking about. Is the love nature of God, according to the masters, 
and Maitreya is sending it out into the world in tremendous potency these days because we are on the verge of an awakening, a human, human, you know, humanity waking up to the fact that we are one is what we're on the verge of. And in the love nature of God is being poured out into humanity in such a potency that we haven't seen ever before. And it's bringing out in every single one of us exactly who and what we are, all our corruption, all the good and the bad. And when we see people in groups like political groups, we see the divisions now to where one side can't cooperate with the other at all, both sides, right? And then there are also individuals, and, and his master talked about it, that there are individuals throughout history, and today's just like it's been in, in, with, with history, that there are individuals also who manifest that sort of cleavage in them. They bring out the best and the worst in whatever they're doing. And I do think that Trump is a manifestation of the sort of cleavage based on what Ben's master was talking about. He's bringing out the worst in humanity, right? You know, on both sides. And he doesn't seem to stop. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Now, there's other things that I totally disagree with, but I also think that, you know, we can't have our political leaders like Trump thinking that they can break the law and get away with it. I don't agree with that. If Hillary Clinton did something illegal, she should be held accountable too. But where the problem is, is that Trump and people on the right are accusing these people without any evidence. They're just making stuff up. Hey, hey, hey. And the danger is, is if he does get back in power and he does do what he wants to do, where he can just, you know, where a a child, you know, a human trafficker or a um, drug dealer can be arrested and in the same day convicted without any real due process and then put to death. Well, what's going to keep them from making up stuff about anybody? You know what I mean? That's the danger that I was trying to bring out, right? So these other things, Tulsi Gabbard and all this other stuff, I mean, that's, I don't know if that's necessarily coming from the Democrats or from the left-wing, you know, media, but, you know, I, I can see where you're coming from with that stuff, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But it, you know, you're, you're kind of taking it into a direction, I mean, we, I could talk about, I don't know, you know, I could talk about... Uh, Ben Shapiro <laughs> or or something like that. I mean, it doesn't, yes, we can talk about all those things, but it doesn't really pertain to what we were talking about initially, I guess is my point. But yes, they're just as divisive, just as uh, corrupt as the Republican Party. I'm not excusing them for that. The other thing too about war hawks and war funding, historically, they both, both sides have very much supported war because they're getting money from from military, you know, contractors and military companies and so forth like that. Hands down. You know, and but there are times when the Democrats want to spend just a little bit of money less on military and a little bit more on social funding and the Republicans go flipping out saying that's going to cause hyperinflation and this that and the other and they're trying to defund the military and gut the military and all they're trying to do is just give a little less money. Right now we're spend we're outspending every nation by far, you know what I'm saying? We don't need to do this, right? And it's, we can't, it's not sustainable either too, right? But yes, they're both guilty of it. You know, I think Hillary Clinton was a hawk, war hawk when she was a, um, the Secretary of State. She helped vote in the war in Iraq, if I'm not mistaken. I know Biden did. You know, I was totally against the war in Iraq, you know, going into Iraq. But they were, they went right along with it too. You know, because that's what their constituents wanted. You know what I mean? But where I do think, like I said, where the Republicans are taking it to nth degree is they're, they're using Christianity and patriotism to not only gin up their base, but to create this long-term loyalty from these voters to where they it will become in their mind, so ingrained in their mind and then the future generations of, of their families and so forth, that if you vote for a Democrat, you're voting against Jesus. And that's, that's not true. You know what I'm saying? That is a lie, right? So anyway, that's where I was coming from with it. And I think that Trump could have, he had an opportunity, he could have stepped in and said, there's no truth to that. And it would have ended all that. But he keeps flaming it and flaming it and retweeting stuff. That's what I was talking about. Does that make sense a little bit more? So anyway, I do appreciate it. Let's get on to the next one because this one has to do with Trump too, I guess. Hi, Gary. I hope you've been well, and I have been. I hope everybody's well, too. Can you please speak on Kanye West's situation, his relationship with Jews, and his viability as Maitreya? Really? He is running for president in 2024. He embraces Christ and says he's God. Best. Well, I mean, he can say whatever he wants to say, I guess. You know, you bringing this up now 
I, I can't help but think, you know, if we were like two soldiers on the battlefield, it's almost like you handing me your grenade saying, hey, hold on to this for me real quick, will you? <laughs> uh, this is a very much of a loaded and explosive question <laughs> that you're asking. I think ultimately Kanye West is an attention seeker and he got exactly what he wanted. And to him, it's more valuable to, to receive attention from people, whether it's negative or positive, than to make money. He's already got all the money he needs. What does he need? A $30 million, contra- $30 million contract from Adidas or whatever that just dropped him or whatever. You know what I mean? To him, it was better to get attention. Who is he learning from? <laughs> He's learning from the best. He just went and had dinner with him, right? Because Donald Trump's very much like that. He doesn't care whether he gets negative press or, or you know, it's, as long as they spell his name right, you know, then no, no publicity is bad publicity, as they say, right? So that's what I personally think Kanye is intentional. I don't know Kanye. I'm not a Kanye fan. He's certainly not my Treya, you know what I'm saying? And, it, you know, he could think he's God's vessel just like, just like everybody else can think they're God's vessel. Whether that's true or not, I don't know. I think we're all divine. He's just as divine as I am or you are or anybody else or Maitreya is, you know, but that's ultimately what I think he was trying to do. Does that answer your question? (laughs) Anyway, but yes. Now let's get back to that red wine comment of Jethro Joshua. I think later on tonight, I'm going to have a couple glasses of wine too. So, (laughs) but anyway, I, um, I wanted to read an article from Benjamin Crim's master entitled the 11th hour. I haven't read an article from him in a while, uh, and I've been missing it. And, I, and maybe you guys have too, if you if you listen to these videos all the way through. And I don't read his articles at the end because they're less important than what I have to say. I think they're way more important than what I have to say. I only say it because I just want to leave you with his thoughts and not me talking afterwards. So if you want to know more about how these masters think, how they'll be teaching humanity about the priorities of Maitreya and so forth, read his articles, go to the Share International site and read some of these articles for yourself. They're wonderful. You, it's the only way you really can absorb what he's saying. I'm just trying to get your, get your palate wet with, with the fact that, that this information's out there for you to read yourself, not just to keep listening it from, you know, coming from me. So hopefully you'll, you'll look at it like that. So anyway, the 11th hour by Benjamin Krim's master. Whenever humanity is in trouble, its tendency is to do one or other of two things, to disregard all portents and signs of difficulty and to continue in blind assurance that all will be well, or to make some sudden and uncalculated leap in, into an opposite direction. For some time, despite all signs of danger, men have opted for the former. Closing their eyes to the obvious breakdown of their institutions and misuse of resources, and ignoring the warnings of learned men of drastic consequences they have blundered on, risking the lives and well-being of humanity as a whole. Gradually, however, it has dawned on many that the future is bleak indeed, that no special preservation surrounds the human race, that without major reorientation the race of men is doomed to extinction. More and more this truth dawns on the population of a world in peril. Now, at the eleventh hour, men begin to tackle the manifold problems which await their concern. At last, governments take seriously and heed the warnings of planetary dislocation, which for long they have ignored. At last, they see the dangers of a burgeoning population amid ever-reducing resources. At long last, they recognize the international nature of the many problems and the need for cooperation, cooperative action in solving them. A new sense, too, of urgency informs this late approach and augurs well for the planet and the race. Into this more favorable situation, the Christ can now emerge. Behind the scenes, he has for long pointed to the newer, better way. Now, in few, few, full view, <clears throat> excuse me, he can add his voice to the growing clamor for redirection. Under his stimulus, men will with vigor create the conditions which will enable humanity to live in peace. Thus will be transformed this threatened planet and thus will begin the ascent of man. Soon, Maitreya will provide sure proof of his presence and call for a concerted effort to save this world. 
Through a major television, his words will resound. His message of peace through sharing will galvanize all those whose hearts are pure and challenge the existing institutions to change. One by one, the decaying structures of the present will fail before the logic of human need and sanity. The greed and corruption of the past will give way to the fresh air of manifested good, and in growing numbers, men will gather around the herald of the new, the harbinger of the future blessed time. Soon, the world will awaken to the reality of its predicament, and turning to Maitreya, will seek his counsel. That wise counsel will not be withheld. Remember to take action and help SOP save our planet. Thanks for listening, and we look forward to talking to you again in future videos.